Welcome, everyone, to the Inside Java newscast, where we cover recent developments in the OpenJDK community. I'm Nikolai Parnock, Java developer advocate at Oracle, and today I got four topics for you. With JDK 16 out the door, we can take some time to take a closer look at two of the exciting new additions, the Incubating Vector API and at records, specifically at records serialization. Uh, then we'll peek towards JDK 17, where a new JEP just landed and the release schedule was published. Ready? Then let's dive right in. We'll start with the Vector API. Recently, Paul Sandoz, Java architect at Oracle, and Sanya Viswanathan, principal software engineer at Intel, gave a talk on this topic at Oracle Live. I highly recommend you watch it. Uh, here, I'll cover the motivation for and current status of the API, so you can safely skip the first couple of minutes. I'll leave a timestamped link in the description below. So what is this API all about? The Vector API deals with SIMD computing, which is short for single instruction, multiple data. That means applying an operation, a single instruction, not just to one set of operands, but to multiple sets in parallel. That's where multiple data comes from. This is done by specialized CPU hardware offering so-called vector instructions that execute these operations in about the same number of cycles for several sets of operands as it would take to execute the same operation on a single set of operands. Uh, for example, instead of adding a single pair of numbers to one result, a vector instruction might add 8, 16, or even more pairs to as many results without taking much longer. Most common CPU architectures offer such vector instructions, and the just-in-time compiler's auto-vectorizer already makes use of them wherever it can. The problem is that it's far from perfect in identifying and reliably optimizing such scenarios. So for performance-sensitive algorithms that adhere to the SIMD style of programming, the new Vector API offers a specialized programming interface. It takes a what-you-see-is-what-you-get approach, where the API closely resembles common vector instructions. That guarantees that the just-in-time compiler can generate optimal hardware instructions across all supported CPU architectures. Typical applications are linear algebra, image processing, character decoding, really anything that's heavy on basic arithmetic and needs to apply that to a lot of independent inputs. The Vector API is a cooperation between Oracle and Intel, spearheaded by Paul Sandoz and Sanya Viswanathan. It was first released in JDK 16 and is incubating the module currently named JDK Incubator Vector. That means in order to use it, you need to enable it with the command line flag at modules equals JDK Incubator Vector at compile time and runtime. The API will keep incubating for quite some time for three main reasons. First, to get a feedback. So if you have a use case for it, you can help make it better by trying it out and reporting your findings to the project Panama mailing list, link in the description. Second, to provide more architecture-specific implementations, for example, for ARM. And third, to benefit from Project Valhalla's primitive objects once they arrive and from Panama's foreign memory API. At this point, I'd love to go into details and explain how the new types vector and vector species interact, or what a species is for that matter, also, what a shape is, why it's important, and how you pick the correct one for your CPU architecture. But I don't have time for it here, so you should really check out Paul's and Sanjia's talk. Beyond what I just outlined, Paul goes on to give an example of how the Vector API makes the JDK more performant and maintainable. Sanjia has a lot more pretty cool examples from dot product and matrix multiplication to image manipulation and mandel board generation. If, after that talk, you still don't have enough, Check out Inside Java Podcast Episode 7 with John Rose, Java Virtual Machine Architect at Oracle, and Paul Sanders, as well as Fizzbuzz Simdi Style, a blog post by Gunnar Morling, software engineer at Red Hat. Links to both below. Now, let's have a look at records. Records were finalized in JDK 16, so if you're on the recent release, you can go ahead and use them in production. To productively use them, though, you need more than just the language. Tools and dependencies need to play along as well. For a data-centric feature like records, that puts serialization high up on that list. A uh, quick aside, when I say serialization, I'm not just talking about Java's onboard serialization mechanism that turns instances into byte streams and vice versa. Uh, that one, of course, already works perfectly fine with records. No, I'm talking about the wider concept, where an instance gets turned into any kind of external representation, for example, JSON or XML. These and many more formats are under the purview of a number of frameworks and they need to be made aware of records as well. So to give records a leg up, Chris Haggerty and Julia Boos, both working at the Java Platform Group at Oracle, engaged with three popular Java-based serialization frameworks, namely Jackson, Cryo and Xtreme. For Jackson, they help with reviews. For Cryo and Xtreme, they provide pull requests. Thanks in part to their contributions, 
And the recent versions of these three frameworks now support records. Uh, by the way, as far as I'm aware, so does Apache Johnson, but don't take my word for it. If you're interested to learn more about why records and serialization are such a good match, or how Julia and Chris implemented these features, check out their blog post on Inside Java, link below. I really like the changes that went into JDK 16, and we'll make sure to cover more of them in the coming episodes. If you don't want to miss that, make sure to subscribe. But I also want to take a look at the near future, which is JDK 17. Two things happened there recently. For one, JDK Enhancement Proposal 356 was just targeted at version 17. In fact, it was already merged. It streamlines, improves, and extends Java's various random number generators. Then, the release schedule was finalized. JDK 17 will be forked from the mainline on June 10th. That means from that point on, development will prioritize bug fixes over new features. The final release candidate is planned for August 19th and general availability for September 14th. And that's it for today on the Inside Java Newscast. If you have any questions about what I covered in this episode, ask it in the comments below. And if you like this content, help us spread the word with a like or sharing with your friends or colleagues. I see you again in two weeks. So long!